Important developments inside Donald Trump's civil fraud trial. The judge just made clear what can and cannot be discussed and what has already been determined. Namely, this judge made clear that he's already ruled that Trump committed fraud. And he's sort of done listening to arguments about that. Seen as Bryn Gingras live outside the courthouse in downtown Manhattan with the very latest. Bryn. Yeah, John, I mean, we're on day two of the civil trial, which is expected all the way to last until just before Christmas. And like you just said, the judge going onto the bench this morning saying he fully expects to expect defense attorneys to appeal this trial and also saying that this trial is not an opportunity to mitigate what I've already decided, referencing that decision he made last week uh, about uh, finding Trump and his adult sons and Trump organization uh, liable for fraud. So we'll see how this continues. But on the and right now, we are hearing more testimony uh, from Trump's former accountant, uh, Donald Bender, talking about the nitty gritty of those financial statements, how uh, property valuations were uh, um, figured out, who figured them out, who signed off on them, all of those details. And we'll continue to hear from the defense, of course, who is fighting for the fact that there was no intent, there was no fraud when preparing financial statements and making valuations of properties. And their point, they say, there was no victims in this case. So that is the arguments that we'll continue to see echo throughout uh, this long civil trial. Inside the courtroom, I can tell you that uh, the former president walked in again, did not acknowledge New York Attorney General Letitia James, who's also seated in the courtroom uh, right now. This is right after he made some statements again outside the courtroom about her and about the judge again. Um, and also his son, uh, Eric Trump, is also in the courtroom as well. The question is how long do all of them, especially the former president, do they plan to stay today? They were here the full day yesterday. Uh, that remains to be seen how long he'll stay, stay for this testimony. Uh, we also want to know how many times he'll actually be back at this quarter. We know he is eager to testify in his own defense, uh, so we fully expect that to happen. Again, a lot of stake here. We've been talking about it. Kristen Holmes has given great details about what is at stake here, his brand. He is eager to defend it. And as we've mentioned, uh, the state has said in their opening statements, closing it out, saying, that they are asking the judge to make sure that the Trumps never do business in New York again. So this is one we'll, of course, continue to closely watch. Now that the judge has already made clear there was fraud, and we're not going to argue whether there was fraud anymore in this courtroom, so how do they move on? Yeah, um, the Trump's team needs to really focus on what still remains in the case, and there's a lot. I mean, there are like six other counts in the case, and those counts do involve intent. Michael Cohen's going to testify. You know, it should be a fun cross-examination for them, although I think it'll hold up pretty well. They need to move off of playing Trump in the courtroom and playing up to their clients sitting there. You know, maybe it'll change when he's not there, John, because while he's there, they really have to play to him. The judge is saying to them, look, I'm tired of you rehashing this point. You've already been sanctioned for making the same arguments over and over again. That's what the appeal's for. Let's move forward and deal with the issues ahead of you right now. What does the government have to prove? How are you going to counter that? That's what the judge is saying to them. And they're doing themselves and their client a disservice if they just continue to make the same arguments that Trump is making in front of the cameras during his press conferences. Shan, there is no jury here. We can't say that enough. That was something that was a choice by Trump's defense team and perhaps Donald Trump himself. They are now arguing with the one person that who is going to decide this case. That doesn't seem like a winning strategy. How do you see it? Well, judges are assumed to be better than lay people at putting aside personal irritation, putting aside some evidence or arguments that normally wouldn't make it before a jury. But you're exactly right. Here, the fact finder and the legal adjudicator are the same person, and the judge is only human. I mean, if you keep wasting the judge's time rehashing the same arguments the judge has already ruled on and the judge is telling you, quit doing that, one, the judge will be irritated, but... More importantly, the judge is going to not treat your arguments with as much attention and credibility. His eyes are going to kind of glaze over on this. And that does not do you as the defense counsel any good. You really want the judge to be paying attention to what you're saying, not looking at you like, well, you just keep saying the same stuff that I told you not to say. So I think going forward, that is a problem for them. Let's go back uh, and talk around the table here. I, I want to because this is inside politics and they're going to do the, the, the legal, very important legal discussions. 
uh, elsewhere today. The, the question that Donald Trump is asking, no, the um, allegation that he is out putting out there is that the judge and the DA, they're doing this to take him off the campaign trail. Let's listen to what he said about that. And this was for politics. Now, it has been very successful for them because they took me off the campaign trail because I've been sitting in a courthouse all day long instead of being in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, or a lot of other places I could be at. So that was yesterday as this began. Fact check. He doesn't have to be there. There is no requirement. He is not compelled legally to be there. His campaign aides make it pretty clear that they think that this is the best campaign um, stop for him, the best use of his time as a candidate in the short term as he could possibly have, despite how painful it might be when it comes to the core of who he is, a businessman. Dana, he's on the campaign trail. He is talking to his uh, electorate, his base. He's talking to his donors and his supporters when he's out there saying, look what they're doing to me. He is sowing more seeds of distrust. We've been talking about that a lot that, uh, around the table. He's out there saying, vote for me again, bet on me. I'm being mistreated by everyone else and I'm your guy. And he's ahead in the polls. It's working for him. So of course he's gonna stick with that line that you're not letting me on the campaign trail, so I'm just gonna do it right here in the courtroom. And even so, he's consuming all the oxygen in this Republican presidential race, which is frustrating his rivals, of course, because once again, it's all about Donald Trump. But we are seeing one thing here. I mean, this is deeply affecting him. This was not the president who was the most engaged president. Often he didn't read intelligence briefings. He wasn't exactly steeped in policy. He is steeped in this. This is his life. Mm -hmm. This is his core. And you can tell how much it's getting to him. So I don't know if that will have an effect on just his uh, psyche here. But separately, outside the courtroom, as we've heard him talking, he's not under oath. When he's in that witness stand, he will be under oath. So this is something we've also not seen from him. So this is, uh, it looks good politically, it is good politically, but it's perilous in the long term here. Um, but uh, he's on the campaign trail. You're totally right. Totally he right. Might as well be in Cedar Rapids. Yeah. I mean, he I mean, is. He is. Uh, he's on the TV in Cedar Rapids right now. He's just likely. not, it's not like he's uh, hanging out eating, eating burgers at the, anyway. Um, I, I want to take this up several notches to the core question of Donald Trump and should he be president again? And our colleague Jake Tapper got some great reporting from one of Donald Trump's many former chiefs of staff in the White House, John Kelly, uh, retired general. And here's what he said. A person that has no idea what America stands for and has no idea what America is all about, a person who cavalierly suggests that a selfless warrior who has served his country for 40 years in peacetime and war should lose his life for treason, he's talking about Millie there, an expectation that somebody will take action, a person who admires autocrats and murderous dictators, a person that has nothing but contempt for our democratic institutions, our constitutions, and rule of law. This is, again, in response to, well, a lot of things, but most recently in response to the fact that Donald Trump put on his social media platform, effectively, that Mark Milley, the outgoing, uh, decorated chairman of the Joint Chiefs, deserves the death penalty, suggesting that at least. And this is a bigger question about whether he should be president again from a man who served steps from him for months in the White House. I think John Kelly going on the record with these concerns and uh, validating the you know information that had already long been reported on background or anonymously is really important. I think you're seeing a lot of um, people who were either nonpartisan or right-leaning or Republicans who served Donald Trump in some capacity over the course of his presidency going on record now, whether it's John Kelly, whether it's Chris Christie, whether it's Mark Milley, um, talking, whether it's Cassidy Hutchinson, talking about why they're deeply concerned and uh, how, uh, how catastrophic they would see a second term as being. The challenge for all of these people is that the bulk of Donald Trump's base, the bulk of people who are still supporting him, have already made their decision mm -hmm. about whether they should trust Donald Trump's word or John Kelly's word, Donald Trump's word or Chris Christie's word, Donald Trump's word or Cassidy Hutchinson's word. And uh, where these people get their news, how they get their information, who are the validators, who they may listen to, how they may be swayed, that is yep. really what will make the difference here.